Hello and welcome back to the MMORPG tutorial project. In this video, it is now time to deal with the hello packet from the server on the game maker side of things. Now this is going to be the big one. This will be fairly complicated, so um, yeah, get ready for some complicated stuff. Let's jump straight in, go into your game maker project, jump into the network object that we created before. We are going to create a asynchronous networking event. Now inside of the asynchronous networking event, we're going to drag a code segment. And this is where we're going to be dealing with the incoming data. So the first thing I'm going to do, the very, very, very first thing is I'm just going to say show debug message. And I'm just going to say networking event triggered. I'm going to save that. I'm going to make sure my server's running, which it is, and I'm going to start up my project. And we're going to watch this section down here in the console. And what you'll see is that the networking event was triggered. What does this actually mean? Well, if you remember back to the last video, we sent the client a packet of data which said hello. Now, when GameMaker is connected to a server and a packet of data comes in, it fires the networking event or triggers the networking event and passes the data into that object or into that event so that you can handle it inside of your game. So the fact that we see network event triggered down here means that our server is working correctly and the data has arrived from the server at the client ready to be processed. So if you remember back to the last video, I had a bit of an explanation about how packets can get stuck together and how it can be a bit of a nightmare to actually process that. Well, in this video, that is what we're going to be doing and we'll be setting up our handle packet event as well. So the first thing we need to do is set up a switch inside of GameMaker. It's going to be from the async load, not log, load. And we're going to use GameMaker's accesses here. So I'm going to say question mark type, oh, sorry, question mark type. So we're going to pluck out the type variable from the uh, async load event, which is where GameMaker puts all of the asynchronous data so that you can access it. Asynchronous meaning that it has arrived and it's been placed somewhere regardless of what's happening in your game currently. Or well, asynchronous means in, in any time that it can happen asynchronously. Um, and the only type of data that we're going to deal with in this event is going to be network type data. So I'm going to say case network type network type data. If we receive network type data, I'm just going to add break here. There we go. If we receive network type data, we need to de we need to decrypt the packet. So we need to find out those lengths. We need to pluck them apart and uh, send them off to a handler function that can deal with them. Uh, so jump back into our create event for the object network. I'm just going to load up my sample code here so I can remember what I did. Uh, and we need, we need a couple of, um, instance variables. Actually, you know what I need to do? I need to put this back here. Initiate the socket, initiate, initiate. Uh, and we also need some IVARs, instance variables. Saved buffer is going to be the first one. It's going to be equal to buffer create. It's going to be of size one and it can grow. It's going to be type buffer grow and it's align. It's going to be alignment. It's going to be alignment one. It's going to be aligned to one byte. We need reading equals zero. This is going to be the position in the buffer that we're reading from. And we also need cut buffer, which is going to be the data that gets cut out of the buffer. And this is going to be buffer create size one buffer grow alignment one. Now I can't take full credit for this code. I actually found a little bit of this code on the game maker forums. Unfortunately, I cannot remember who did it. So I apologize for not giving proper credit. If I can find the post again, I will put a link to it in the description of this video. Um, now back into our networking event. Now that we have those uh, variables created, we can begin copying the data from the buffer at the size of, at the size of the data that arrived into the saved buffer. So buffer copy, we want to copy from the async load, load event. 
Now, the async load event gives us a buffer, and that's the buffer that has arrived from the server. We're going to start at position zero. Uh, the size of this buffer is going to be the size of the buffer, and async load provides that to us as well. Async load, question mark, size, closing brace. Now the destination for this buffer is going to be uh, saved buffer and we're going to place it at the current size of saved buffer. So say like three or four packets have arrived at once, they will all be concatenated into one buffer. So we use buffer tell to find out where we currently are in a buffer and we're just going to say saved buffer. There we go. So that's the destination. Oh, I'll put a capital B, that should be lowercase. So what we've done is we've taken the data that's arrived at the client from the server and we've put it into another buffer and we're appending to that buffer every time new data arrives. Now what we need to do is we need to seek to the current position in the saved buffer that we should be reading from. So I'm going to use buffer seek to do that. The buffer we're going to seek in is the saved buffer. We're going to be using the buffer seek relative method to do that. It's going to be relative to the offset. And the offset that we're going to use is the async load size plus one. So we're going to use size and we're going to use plus one because we're going to be one byte ahead of where we need to be at. So now what we've done is we've loaded the buffer into an endlessly growing buffer and we have moved to the current position that we need to read that buffer from within the buffer, if that makes sense. So while, so we're gonna create an endless loop here and this endless loop, it's, it's only gonna be endless until we have successfully read all of the information that was in the buffer. So while true, so basically forever, because true is always true. There we go. We are going to create a, another buffer to read the size so we're basically, sorry, we're going to read another buffer that reads the first byte of the entire buffer, which tells us the size, because on our server, every packet we send from the server starts with the size. So var size equals buffer peak saved buffer, because that's the buffer that we've loaded all the data into at the reading position, which is currently zero. And the data we're going to read is a buffer type of u8 because it was an unsigned 8-bit buffer that we sent from the server to define the size of the packet. Um, so now if if the uh, this is complicated if the saved buffer is bigger than the current position plus the size of the data that, that we're looking for then it means that there's data that we can process. If it's not then we need to resize the saved buffer back to zero because it means we've processed everything and end the while loop. So I can say if buffer get size saved buffer, if that's greater than or equal to the reading position plus the size of the current piece of data that we're looking at. So if the, if there is more data there than what we've looked than what we know about, um, then we can do whatever is inside of this chunk of code. Otherwise, we can break our while loop because there's no more data left to read. So now it's getting interesting. Um, at this point, we can copy the data out of the saved buffer into the cut buffer. Okay, so we're going to take the saved buffer, pull out the information we need, stick it back in the cut buffer now. So to do that, we can say buffer copy. We're going to copy from the saved buffer. Uh, at the reading position, which is the current position that we're reading from. The size of the packet is going to be the size of the information that we're looking at. And we're going to insert that into cut buffer, which is the buffer that we've cut the data, that we're cutting the data into. And that's always going to be at position zero. So now we've cut the information that we're, so we've cut the packet up. If two packets have collided together, we've taken the first packet based on the size that we sent from the server and stuck that into cut buffer. Now we need to go back to the beginning of cut buffer so that we can actually deal with it. So I'm going to say buffer seek cut buffer position zero offset one. There we go. 
Now that we've moved back to the beginning of cut buffer, we can call a script. So I'm just gonna put this in comments because we haven't created the script yet. Called handle packet. And it's gonna take cut buffer as a parameter. <coughs> Excuse me. So now that we have successfully pulled the information out and processed it in our handle packet function, we can now determine if there's still more data left to read and allow our while loop to continue or resize the saved buffer back to, to one byte and then set our reading position back to zero and end the while loop from within our if statement. So if buffer get size saved buffer is not equal to reading plus size. So the reading position plus the size of the current packet. Then we can say reading is going to be plus equal to size because we need to move. We've, we've essentially gone through here. We've read the packet out. We have handled the packet and now we need to move forward in our reading position so that when the while loop happens again, the information that we get out in our size, our next size value is going to be the position of the next value. Uh, yeah, so it'll be the position of the next packet in the in the in the string of hex data that came back from the server because multiple packets can collide together. If you remember back to the last video, by collide together I mean packet one will be attached to the end of packet two for some reason um, because your PC has buffered all of that information up before it gave it to GameMaker. So you get two packets in one networking event which need to be dealt with. So if it's if it if it did equal um, reading plus size, it means that we've reached the end of our buffer and there's no more data to process. So we can resize our saved buffer back to nothing. Buffer resize saved buffer back to one byte. We can set our reading position back to the start because the next piece of information that comes in from the server will need to go back to the start and read through that again. And then we can end our while loop. So that was fairly complicated. Now we're going to create our script to handle the packet. So I'm just going to close the networking event stuff for now and create a new script called handle packet. There we go. Uh, and again, I'm just loading up my, my template. I created a template before I did these videos. So hopefully they'd be a little bit more structured than the RPG series. Okay, so we have the handle packet function. I'm just gonna save that, there we go. I'm just gonna define argument zero to be the data buffer or the cut buffer that we've pulled out. So essentially we can deal with handle buffer, sorry, handle packet as if it was only dealing with one packet always because we've already done the hard work of splitting those packets up into their own individual packets. Now we can just deal with them one at a time using handle packet. So var command, because all of our packets start with a command. Um, for instance, our hello is hello, that's the command. So command equals buffer read. It's gonna be from argument zero, because that's what we pass in, argument zero. And it's gonna be of type buffer string. Now I'm just gonna go show debug message. I'm gonna add networking event. And I'm also gonna concatenate onto that a string of command. So the data that comes back from the server will now get echoed into our console. At this point, we could deal with our, we can deal with our buffer, yeah. So we can do a switch case statement. So I'm just gonna say switch command. And in curly braces, I will add a case for hello in capitals again, and then I'll break from that. So if the packet arrived that says hello, it will have a server time variable associated with it, which is going to be a string. So I can say buffer read argument zero, buffer type of string, that gives us our server time. And then we could also move to the next room. We haven't created the next room yet, so I'm not gonna do that in this video. Actually, I will do that in this video. Correct me, I will do that in this video. So we're gonna say room go to next, because the next room is gonna be our login screen. 
we can say show debug message. And in this, we're going to say server welcomes you at and then plus server underscore time. So, this, so we'll see all this information in the console. And then we'll, we'll end this switch case statement. So we can add others after this one. Now, hopefully if I got all of that right and I am still running the server, which I believe I am. Yep, server's still running. Um, I need to close that. Um, server's still running. We need to add one more room to our game. So I'm just going to add another room, create room. This is going to be called rm underscore login. It's going to be 640 by 360, I think the dimensions were. And the background I'm going to use for this one is just going to be BG title screen. I've made a blank title screen for my game, but you know, you guys can make whatever you like. And that's it. We don't need to have any objects on the screen for this one. And hopefully if everything went correctly and we run the game, we'll have an error. Yay, fun. Um, unexpected symbol in expression. Reading plus equals size. I don't see a problem with that. Just game maker not support plus equals. I'm going to pause the video and I will fix this and let you know what was wrong. Okay, I had an extra parenthesis um, in my if statement at the top here. I had an extra bracket. So I just get rid of that bracket and all should be well again. So this is the first time I'm running the project. And you'll see that we are connecting. And what is going on? We haven't received any event back from the server yet. Socket initiated, which means we should be receiving data from the server. Um, and it looks like we haven't received any data from the server. So let's begin the debugging process. This is building an MMORPG 101. It's fairly complicated. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll get back to you again when I know what's wrong. Okay, and I bet you're all probably shouting at your screams at me, Ryan, you idiot, because the uh, handle packet function was commented out. So let's uncomment that and run the project again. There we go. So, as you can see, we have received, we've, we started off in the init room. The server sent us a welcome packet when we connected. The client side processes the welcome packet. Uh, calls the handle packet function in a script, which basically determines what the packet is. So first of all, we see an event in our console saying network event, hello. And then finally we see a server welcomes you at, and then the time in milliseconds with very high accuracy because we used the performance.now counter. So I hope you liked this video. Uh, if you did like it, please like it. If you didn't like it, go away. No, I'm just kidding. If you didn't like it, leave your comments in the um, comment section below and any feedback and questions and things like that, comment them below and don't forget to share the video with everyone you know and on Facebook and on Twitter and on, on all those social networks. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.